download the Spark demo file you see in the wiki, and decompress it to see the contents. You'll see a couple of folders, one with a bunch of animated GIF files, and another folder with a bunch of movie files in MP4 format that were generated from the GIF files. We could also have included still images in JPG or PNG format if we needed them. But in this work, I wanted absolutely everything in motion because Spark doesn't really do a lot for animating still images as of early 2019. In fact, Spark doesn't really behave like Slideware. PowerPoint, Keynote, and even Google Slides can do some interesting things with still images. Spark acts a bit more like a simpler version of iMovie than anything approaching Slideware, even though a search for the term, Adobe Slideshow, brings up Spark. It may seem funny that Adobe, the heavyweight of the multimedia authoring world, dances around the idea of Slideware with Slideshow-like functions scattered around various apps like Photoshop Elements or Bridge, but has never developed an explicit slide software itself. There's likely some marketing strategy behind this, but whatever. Although it stands apart from its Slideware cousins, Spark is the closest I've seen Adobe come to creating a pure presentation software. And it can produce some interesting effects if you don't expect it to give you quite the range of options found in other apps. A good example is the need to convert these GIFs I've collected into videos. I like these GIFs because they loop and they're short, so they edit together well. But if you place them in Spark, the software only shows the first frame as a still image. So, to get them to work in Spark, I've taken them to an online video conversion tool. Many exist, but here I use the website, gif2mp4.com. Simply upload a GIF and in moments a download button lets you grab a movie. Anyway, Back to the folder. I've organized my movie downloads to keep them separate, and of course you'll notice there's no native application build file hanging around in here. Spark is a creative cloud-based software accessible only through a browser. So instead of a file, locate links to various states of the movie in New Media Wiki. This demonstration assumes you have taken the brief Spark tutorials specified in New Media Wiki. If you haven't, they are located in the link available in the wiki. Do these before you continue with this demo. Okay, so we're quickly going to highlight how the main elements of this show were created. We won't be discussing basics handled in the Spark tutorials. Instead, we're highlighting the workflow and most useful tools used to generate the final movie. I've done this project in three basic steps. In the first step, I simply made an introductory text and added each video in the order I wanted to put it, then made a placeholder text for the links to URLs for the GIFs I used to credit the sources. We'll add actual content here later. In this first step video, you'll see a very short, very loosely structured work with pretty disengaged music. Now, be aware that you can't open the build file because it's locked up in my Creative Cloud account. You can only look at this shared work in progress. This will act as a guide to what I'm doing in the user interface, but you'll have to be content to watch and make note in this video. So here I'm in Spark's back room for that first stage video. I'm working with the four palettes layout, theme, resize, and music just to give this thing some structure to play around with. Starting with music first, I've uploaded a track of Fred Astaire singing Irving Berlin's Putting on the Ritz. I got this track by downloading a video from Vimeo and using QuickTime to save as audio only, then using the trim function in QuickTime to use only the portion of the track I wanted. I wish to keep the video around a minute or so, and using a short excerpt of a work rather than the whole thing keeps things kosher from a copyright perspective. This is a derivative, transformative work, and the pairing of image to song in this manner creates an ironic parody that changes the original and develops a new idea. After uploading the sound, I choose a video size under resize, and here I go widescreen. Under theme, I choose the one name statement, and I can choose a color palette based on this theme. Now, under layout, I choose the various appropriate options for content, title and text for the opening title and author credit. For example, when I get around to adding the videos, I notice that some of my videos are tall, others are wide. For the tall ones, I use the split screen layout, and for the wide ones, I use the full screen. For the final slide, I add a text overlay to create credits, rather than use the standard credit slide, which I hide. I also hide the standard outro slide. Spark saves as I go. When I'm done with this copy of the file, I go to the main Spark project page by clicking on the logo at upper left, and then I duplicate the file to go to the next step. Open the link for step 2 and watch the video. Notice how the timing of the clip synchronizes with the soundtrack, and notice also a couple of new assets. Let's go backstage and see how the pacing was developed. First, a new slide was added at slide 3 and contains a portion of the video that the soundtrack was ripped from. Just 6 seconds of the clip is used, 
and the sound is muted so it won't interfere with the soundtrack. Next, notice the next clip, the Trump Clown, is duplicated four times. Since it's derived from a looping GIF, these video clips also loop as you string them along. This is a trick that's used a number of times to match the pacing of the images with the pacing of the sound. You can get pretty good synchronization in Spark by doing this with GIF-based tracks. From time to time, you might have to trim a half second or so off the last duplicate to match timing. Something else interesting is happening at around slide 14. The relatively long clip of Putin dancing in a tux was a bit draggy, so I duplicated the slide a number of times, placed it on a split screen, and matched up the trim points from slide to slide to match with the original timing of the longer clip. This creates an interesting dynamic effect. These techniques are repeated a number of times until the timing of the images synchronizes with the sound in interesting ways, and the overall length of the video corresponds to the phrase, super duper, in the song, where I cut it for length. One nice thing we notice when we play the preview is that Spark automatically creates a fade at the end, a nice resolution to what is often a clumsy cut when we pre-edit a song in quick time. For our final cut, open the final cut link and play the video. Notice several changes here. I've changed the theme to the Elevate theme, which gave me better background graphics to run some of my smaller GIFs against. I switched out a lot of the split screen work to take advantage of that. I also like the font in Elevate better for this show. But probably the most significant change for content is the introduction of many ironic text elements in the split screen clips. In the first group of Trump clown slides starting at slide 4, for example, I used text-based symbols, arrows, and punctuation to reinforce the song lyrics. Starting at slide 9, I use up and down arrows to do the same thing. At slide 15 and 16, I use the currency symbols for the ruble and the dollar for ironic effect. At slide 19, I create an old-school winking smile emoji juxtaposed against the looping mushroom cloud to reinforce the irony of the quote wonderful time unquote expressed in the song. Starting at slide 21, I used the text, put in on the Ritz as a visual pun to change the meaning of the chorus. Finally, starting at slide 29, I used the text, put in on the Ritz again, but this time using the Cyrillic alphabet. To finish the build for the final cut, I used the last looping GIF to create a closing credit, including URLs to credit the original source of GIFs and video, and also to cover legal matters like fair use and licensing. When done, we use the share button to create a URL and also an embed to publish the work. We can also share via social media if we wish in this dialog box. So that's it for Spark. It's a simple program, and it's intrinsically limiting. You can't layer lots of things, and it doesn't love if you make something too long or using too many slides. But for what it is, it creates really polished looking cinematic experiences if you know how to manipulate looping clips and sound.